First of all, Matty, a huge congratulations on being named Cymru's new under-21s manager. I'm sure it's an opportunity that you're really uh, excited about. Absolutely, Callum. Yes, it's uh, certainly a, a position I have to pinch myself over. Um, it's not been one that I expected to be in right now over the course of my development over, over so many years. I relish every moment. I live for today and I try and prove my every day. Um, but I found myself in a position where um, I felt ready. I felt ready to, to be interviewed. It was a rigorous process and one that I'd never been through before. So it was important for me to have that experience. And never once did I think that um, I'd come out on top. So full appreciation to everyone involved in the FAW and naturally everyone that supported me along the way on my journey. And just talk me through when you found out and how you reacted and obviously how your family reacted as well. Um, well, it is hard to contain that emotion, isn't it? Because it's a sense of pride. It's not just uh, a job. It's, uh, it's a passion and it's a love and it's something that uh, you know I've always displayed in terms of a representation of your country is something that, at regardless what level, is something that you should um, pride yourself on and, and it's something I've done whether it's coming in and working with the regional teams or being involved with the women's game or just taking part in an appearance down West Wales for example it, it's, I see it as representation for my country uh, and this is no different you know the fact that I'm now currently the manager of uh, Wales under 21s um, yeah it's crazy I, I have to remind myself I know it's, it's, it's still fresh uh, the reaction from my from my parents was a wonderful one, but one that I kind of knew and expected that it was humbling. You know, straight away I get brought down to earth in terms of I shouldn't have had the job, and there was many people in grassroots football that probably should have had it before me, etc. Um, and and that's the the fun and the bank that I suppose I deal with with my family, and and it keeps me grounded. Certainly, it's it's always been something I fully appreciated. Um, uh, you know, at home. Uh, and it's an important thing to have as well around me is one support, but naturally it's 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 people around you keep keeping you humble. Um, I think only five minutes after I had the notification, I had a, a message off my youngest boy junior. He was in school and he lost his uh, PE kit or he didn't turn up with his PE kit. He was worried about the detention, so I had to run down to to the school really to take him his PE kit. So again, there are fine examples that uh, bring you back down to earth, I suppose. And just touching on the women's team, as you mentioned just then, um, you're coming into this role off a back of a really exciting couple of weeks, helping them qualify for the uh, Women's World Cup playoffs as well. So uh, quite an exciting few weeks for yourself. Yeah, thank you, Callum. And, and I suppose I, you know, I just play a small part within that in terms of trying to help uh, improve and create the environment that, that Gemma is striving for and continuing to, to improve. Um, to support the players, I suppose, with the vast experience I've got as a former player, but ultimately as well having the skill set to, to sort of display um, the knowledge and the experiences I've had to try and help them in any way pos possible. And if I can do that, then they're only fine margins, then great. Um, I do feel very much valued um, when, I, when I work with the senior uh, women's team. And I think having the experience of working alongside a practitioner like Gemma Granger has really allowed me to develop myself as well as a person and as a coach and I'm very much grateful for that and I think every member of staff and every player knows that because of the, the passion I display when I come in, you know, I'm high energy, I'm high enthusiasm, I want to be everyone's best friends but uh, let's not forget when we're working on the grass, you know, I do demand a lot and my expectation is always high so hopefully I'm striving for everyone within that environment, no different to the 18s, the 19s, the 21s, you know, I think it's that... Um, leadership quality that you need at, in any walk of life to be able to um, put on to people around you to leave an impression and, and I feel as if I'm doing that you know where, where I, wherever I am right now and that could be just people skills it could be my nature it could be the qual qualities I've possessed in terms of offloading the experiences I've had but going back to the women's game it's been a, a wonderful journey and the fact that we're still embracing this campaign and we're on to the next now it's the process that I think we've had clarity from day one from Gemma. Uh, seeing her work has been absolutely fantastic and no doubt, and I'm not going to deny it and hide the fact that I will be pinching a lot of the strategies and the processes she uses and evolving them in the 21s environment as well because it's, uh, it's certainly um, world leading the way, the way she drives things. And you've obviously been at the FAW since 2020 working with the under 18s team, but you also worked at Swansea City Academy as well before that so can you just talk us through some of your uh, previous experiences as well? Yeah of course and it was a 
it was a great transition for me, you know, becoming or, or sort of having those those eight, nine years at Swansea City. I had the opportunity to go in as an older age group coach, um, which, which I turned down because I wanted to start at the foundation with the younger age groups. Um, and I was on a part-time basis at the time because of natural circumstances, lifestyle, having children, um, growing as a family. But um, I committed my everything, committed my everything to, to, you know, to that ground. And I suppose that uh, the learning opportunities for me to make the mistakes that I needed to make on the grass uh, and not to be exposed, I suppose, um, at you know at an older age group uh, or at certainly at senior level, and I wanted to gain that respect as a coach, even though I knew it um, at the time that I'd probably get instant respect because of my playing career, but I wanted to justify to people that my work ethic, my attitude, my approach to my longevity in the game needs to start at the bottom because I knew that I had to find a way of delivering my message. I had to make the mistakes, etc. Like I said on the grass. And those opportunities allowed me to do that. And quite quickly, I grew through through the age groups at, at Swansea, uh, working with the 15s, 16s at times, where you know it's probably one of the most complex age groups you can work with, with the diversity and the complexities around that age group. And then um, you know moving up to the 23s again, working with some wonderful uh, members of staff. And I think the the curriculum and, and the style of play certainly links in very nicely to the Welsh way and and what our main objectives are when you know when we look at our style when we look at our identity and they they quite they link quite nicely so the transition for me was made it made easy um and it was one that i felt was right at the time in terms of my development as a coach and as somebody who's previously represented the senior team as well on the international stage it must be quite a special feeling to know that you're now working with the next generation um, of players Absolutely, oh, it excites me, Callum. Honestly, it does. Um, you know, even as a young player coming into the system at under fourteens, travelling to Luxembourg, you know, gaining my sort of victory shield cap, you know, coming through those years, going on to represent my country was probably the biggest honour. And there's never, never a doubt. You know, when when I say that to people, but as a young player, or as a young person, I was fond of the Welsh team. I was fond of the history and the culture, and and being proud as a young Welsh boy because of the. I, I suppose the environment I grew up in and, and the tendencies of my mum and dad and my grandparents, you know, it, 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 it's, it's that's what give you, give you the life lessons from a young age and gives you the passion and the drive to want to then go on to succeed. So I had many motivations as a young boy to, to aspire to be a football player, but the highest level is obviously to play for your, for your country and to play for Wales, which is seen as a smaller nation that plays with heart and breathes with fire. You know, that's what uh, my aspiration was from a very young age. So the fact that I, I sort of uh, went on to accomplish that was, was, you know, my greatest achievement. And now, like you say, working with young players, knowing what type of journey they're going on. And it can be complex at times. There was a lot of adversity I needed to come through as a player. And I see that very similar with our players within the system now. So the fact that I can support them, advise them, guide them. Um, and not always will we have the answer, but you try and find the solution for them. And like I say, there's it's no, no better feeling. I'm really excited to work with, with the players. And I'm no different to when I first came in working with the regional sides as opposed to now reminding myself uh, Wales under 21's manager. And there's been so many players over the last couple of years who've made the steps through the age grades to the 21's and then going on to play for the senior team as well. And I'm sure you'll just be looking to try and continue with that trend as well. Yeah, well, it's it's naturally a trend. It's it's the only way, you know. We we all know that um, you know we can't go out there to purchase any players. We have to look after and care for the players we have internally within our system. Uh, over the years, our recruitment uh, process has has become an immaculate process where we know that we can compete with other nations. We can retain players that potentially are dual nation, for example, and that's the utmost importance. And providing them a platform, an environment where they can excel in. Is, is really the target. I see myself as a facilitator within this environment to make sure that we can um, show the players the type of ingredients or help them along their way to make that transition easier. I suppose the difference for me is I see it not necessarily as a trend, but it's a conveyor belt and I, I'm on the, you know, the starting line of that conveyor belt and I need to make sure that the players are projected to the first team as smoothly and as easily as possible. And I'm sure that'll involve quite a lot of conversations with uh, Rob Page as well to make that transition as smooth as, as possible.
well, listen, there's no better mentor to have is, is there in terms of our national senior manager. Um, the conversations I have had, as well as you know, publicly being announced recently that he's always got one eye on youth development, he's always got one eye on the next generation. And there's no better uh, words to, to you as a, as a youth coach, I suppose, or a development coach in terms of having a senior manager with that mindset, knowing that he's already looking over his shoulder at, at the next best Gareth Bale, the next best Aaron Ramsey. Uh, we see that as, as younger age group coaches. So having that alignment now, I think, is, is absolutely key. The communication has always been a positive one, and it's something that I've always felt lucky, certainly for a number of years now, having that close connection with, uh, with Rob, with Ryan, with, with Cookie, and with Speeds as well. So having that connection with the senior uh, managers, knowing that they've got my full backing as a, as a fond and a passionate patriotic Welshman, but now in a professional capacity, where we're looking to support and facilitate the senior team. And that alignment will, will come evident in our next camp in September. We're both being based at, at Hensel in our, in our home base resort, where we can amalgamate both teams. You know, there's opportunity for, for us to spend time observing and for players to have the opportunity to look what best looks like. And we'll use that modelling in terms of how the first team train, how they behave, uh, the mannerisms of players, etc., the professionalism, and and this is all fantastic news for you know for us involved in in the younger age groups, knowing that the alignment becomes cleaner, and the opportunities for the players to see exactly what identity and what best looks like in terms of a, a senior capacity, does allow them to gain self confidence, self belief, and sees the transition a lot cleaner, smoother, and quicker for them, I suppose. And now looking ahead. Uh, to this month, your first game in charge against Austria. You've announced your squad, quite a few exciting players involved and I'm sure it's a camp that you're really looking forward to. Absolutely, yeah, and I think it's a pivotal camp in terms of our preparation for the qualification which starts in June. So between now and then, even though I'll be pushing for more and more opportunities, getting players out of international windows, which is uh, which is not the norm, but if we can have more contact time with these players, the better, because it's it's about selling our identity, what our philosophy looks like, what our behaviours look like, and there's a lot of work for me to, to put in place in terms of building on the foundations that were already there. Uh, I suppose taking on a new group of players who have suffered through COVID, where they haven't had too much contact time. So this is a great observational camp for us in terms of reconnecting with players, re-engaging with with, with coaches at the clubs and, and the clubs themselves as well as the players. So I'm really excited for, for that as our main objective is just to reconnect with the players but also it gives us a great opportunity to see the strength and depth within the squad so we are bringing healthy numbers into this squad deliberately to then narrow that back down in March when we hopefully have a, a, a double header uh, friendly camp in, in, in March. And just finally, what are some of the uh, longer term ambitions and aims for yourself uh, during your time in this role? Um, probably a difficult question if I'm honest Callum because my aspiration has always been um, better myself on each day and, and focusing on the now as opposed to what, what lies in the future I think with and, and I, I have to manage that expectation with the players as well because they all want things so quickly and they're eager to make the next step and you know the trend in football at the moment is to be stretched is to be challenged high and, and to be pushed up to the next age group but I think what's important to recognise is the appreciation of the cap accumulation which we've identified through great research it's it, it's given us fantastic evidence in terms of the importance of that and to um, attain players within their own age groups at time to build that confidence build that self uh, self-esteem and to make sure that they're excelling and giving them an opportunity to really grow um, and there will be opportunities that players like Luke Harris which is fantastic news for him his family and all the people that have supported him to be generated um, to the to the first team um, but that may look different in October and November, you know, where we've got to make sure that we manage his expectations and how we support him in terms of what we provide for him going forward will be the catalyst of, of how he progresses. Let's hope he make a fantastic impression on everyone. And it's not just uh, Rob Page and his senior staff, but the players alike as well. And I'm sure if he gets the opportunity, he'd want to make a fantastic impression on fans too. Well, uh, big congratulations once again and uh, best of luck with him, Matty. Thank you, Carmen. Thanks for your time.